Okay, hi there, welcome to this video where we're going to explore the, the key relationship between the value of the coefficient of price elasticity of demand and the, the, the effect this has on the total revenue of, of a business. Now, this is an important relationship that is often explored and tested in different types of exam questions. So why is the coefficient of elasticity important for businesses wanting to lift to increase their, their revenue from sales? Well, let's take an example. When, when we have a low coefficient of demand elasticity, when it's, for example, minus 0.3, then if we were to lift the price by 20%, we'd only see a 6% fall in sales, giving a value of 0.3. So when the, when the coefficient is very low, then a price rise will increase total revenue. So look how see how this works. Here's a fairly inelastic demand curve, an initial price and quantity of P1, Q1. So the total revenue is price times quantity, revenue per unit times by amount sold. And let's say, for example, we now increase the price to P2. Well, our quantity demanded will contract. There'll be a fall in sales, but we're getting a higher price per unit. But in this, this situation, can you see that total revenue will indeed go up? On the one hand, we're selling less. So the, there's a loss of revenue from the reduction in the number of units sold as a result of the price increase. That reduction is Q1 to Q2. On the other hand, there's the additional revenue per unit from selling at a higher price, P2. In this situation, the, 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 sort of the, the orangey ready area is bigger than the green area, showing that total revenue will go up. In contrast, if you have a very high coefficient of elasticity, let's say, for example, 2.5, anything more than one, of course, is elastic. If it's 2.5, then a 10% fall in price will lead to a 25% increase in demand, leading to revenue going up in this situation. So here's a fairly elastic demand curve or average revenue curve. Again, we start off at initial price and quantity P1 and Q1. And the revenue is shown by that square, that rectangle. Now, lowering the price leads to a substantial increase in demand, expansion of demand, because demand is price sensitive. So you're now selling Q2 at price P2. And here, an increase in revenue when demand is price uh, elastic, uh, sorry, decrease in price when the elasticity is more than one leads to higher total revenue. On the one hand, you're getting less per unit sold, but on the other hand, you're selling a much greater quantity. And in this situation, the quantity effect outweighs the price effect and total revenue will go up. So when demand is price inelastic, consumers tend to be insensitive to the price and often they have a lot of consumer surplus, which uh, businesses can cannily extract into extra revenue, perhaps as a result of price discrimination. And this is where you charge a different price to different groups of consumers, in part based on the estimated price elasticity of demand. When the coefficient is equal to one, then we say that demand is unitary elastic. And that means that any price change around that point will leave revenue unchanged. So here's a unitary elastic demand curve. Any price change between P1 and P2 uh, causes a proportionate change in quantity. We get less per unit sold. The change in quantity sold is proportionate to the price change in percentage terms. And those two areas, in theory, should be the same size, leaving total revenue unchanged. Uh, there's various ways you can calculate this. Sometimes you'll get some calculation questions. You might want to press the pause button and do some quick calculations here of the coefficient of price elasticity of demand as we move down a straight line demand curve. So in each case here, the price is falling by £2 and we're selling 50 uh, extra units. So there's a downward sloping straight line demand curve. Notice here initially when the price is falling from 20 to 18, uh, demand goes up by 50. The actual coefficient is 2.5. It's elastic. The total revenue goes up. For cutting price from 16 to 14 gives an elasticity of 1.3. Again, revenue rises, but less quickly. But when we cut the price from £12 to £10, revenue goes down. In fact, the elasticity there is 0.75. So again, there you go. A fall in price when demand is inelastic leads to a fall in total revenue. 
And one way of showing this, if you're doing theme three revision, is to think about average and marginal revenue. So instead of just thinking about the demand curve, think also about the 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 uh, there's the average revenue curve for, for business. Think also about the marginal revenue curve, which has twice the gradient and cuts the x-axis at halfway from where AR cuts the x-axis. So marginal revenue is the change in the business's revenue from selling an extra unit. Now, when marginal revenue is zero, we maximize total revenue. P1, Q1 is the maximum revenue. And at that point, the coefficient of elasticity is one. Anything above it, it's greater than one. Anything below, demand is price inelastic. If we were to cut the price from P1 to P2, yes, we'd sell some extra units, Q2. But again, can you see, can you see here that the fall in revenue per unit from selling at a lower price, the revenue effect of that is bigger than the revenue effect of selling the extra units. So in this situation, revenue would go down once it becomes the marginal revenue becomes negative. Well, I've picked out four multiple choice questions for you. So here's a chance to press the pause button and have a go at four past paper questions on this very topic. A clothes retailer has experimented with changing the prices of various items of clothing sold in their shop. And the prices are shown in uh, year one and year two in, in the table for socks, t-shirts, trainers and trousers. Other things being the same, which one of the following changes would uh, the retailer be most likely to experience? So have a look at the price changes and think about the consequence, the, the elasticities here. Have a go, please, at question number one. So what do we think for this one? The correct answer here is C. Revenue from trainers will go up if the price elasticity is inelastic. The price of trainers has gone up by two pounds. If you have a very low price elasticity demand for a company to sell pretty much the same quantity of trainers, your revenue will go up. Question two, diagram below illustrates a market in which case in which a monopolist takes control and sets a price above the competitive level. And the monopoly price is OS. If it had been competitive, the market price would have been OR. And the question is, under the monopoly charging price OS, the amount buyers spend on the product has increased by what? Press the pause button, please, and have a go at question number two. Now, this question actually is a tricky one. And in the exam, many students got this wrong. The question is asking, under monopoly, don't forget, monopoly charges OS, under competition, the price is OR, the amount that buyers spend has increased by which area? Well, a lot of students chose A. <clears throat> well, the correct answer is, in fact, D. This is one of the most demanding questions in the, in the exam. Uh, a lot of, student, a lot of student, students chose A because the spending S T Y R S T Y. that's the extra spending because the monopoly is charging a higher price. Yes, but... A higher price also affects the quantity demanded. Of course, that's going to fall from V to W. So the amount, the quantity bought and sold is going to be affected by that. So therefore, the area YUVW, YWYUV, is the fall in spending because there's been a reduction in demand. So the net effect is those boxes, isn't it? It's the top box minus the bottom box. Question three, the table below shows the value of the price, elasticity of demand facing each type of provider of passenger transport. If fares charged increased for each by 10%, which type of provider would see the greatest proportional increase in their revenue? Have a go, please, at question number three. So assuming here that prices go up by 10% across the board for trains, for buses, for coach companies, for airlines, which... Uh, which of these would see the biggest rise in their revenue? The answer is airlines, because they have the lowest price elasticity of demand. <clears throat> Train companies would see a fall in revenue. Bus companies, coach companies, yes, their revenue would go up. But the airlines would see the biggest rise because their price elasticity is only 0.5. For example, a 10% increase in fares would only cause a 5% fall in demand. And here's our final question. The price elasticity of demand for a good made by a firm is minus 0.6. If the firm raises, increases the price of the good, what will happen to its revenues? Have a go, please. 
have a go at question number four. This should be fairly straightforward if you follow this video all the way through. The elasticity here is low, it's minus 0.6, i.e. demand is priced in the elastic. So if prices go up, the revenues will rise because the fall in demand is less than the percentage change in price. There we go. This is a very important topic. It's explored in many, many exam questions, multiple choice, data response. The link between elasticity and demand of demand and revenue is a key one to understand. And hopefully this video has helped you along the way. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Look after yourselves and see you again sometime soon.